In this video, you're going to learn how to design the PCB layout for your own custom ESP32 board that includes a built-in battery charger. And for this tutorial, I'm going to be using the free open source KiCad design software. Okay, let's get started. So this is the schematic circuit diagram for the board we're going to be designing. It includes an ESP32 S3 Mini pre-certified module for the microcontroller and wireless radios, a BQ24040, one amp lithium battery charger, a TLV75801 linear regulator, and an ESD protection chip. Programming is done through a USB-C connector, and power is provided through a 5-volt barrel jack. Although I could have instead powered it through the USB-C port, for this design I decided to use a separate power supply. So the first step is in KiCad, I'm going to go in the schematic editor, I'm going to go under tools, then update PCB from schematic. So what this does is it just automatically places down all the components from the schematic. Obviously, they're not in any type of uh, strategic placement. They're just randomly placed. So we're that's what we're going to do is start placing all of the various components. So I'm going to start with our ESP32 module. This is the antenna here, ideally hanging off the edge of the board, or if it's not hanging off the edge of the board, then we just have to make sure we don't have any ground underneath this area. This is a ground keep out area. Now I'm just gonna quickly place the various critical components. Let's put the battery charger near the power input jack and the linear regulator right next to it. So let's start with our battery charger. We've got C1 on the input of U2, which is pin one. So we'll put this here. This connects to here, so I'm just kind of placing it as close as I can. And we have our output capacitor, which is C2, and that's going to go to pin 10, which is the opposite, which is on this other corner. I'm doing that like that. Then we have R4, goes to pin 2, that's our charge current setting resistor. And this can be placed anywhere, it's not really critical, it's low current, so we can. I'm just going to stick it right here for now, get rid of the value. Now we have R5 goes to D1, that's one LED. Then we got R6 goes to D2. And once again, I'm going to just delete the values. Now let's move on to the linear regulator circuit. The decoupling capacitors are the stability capacitors. Most of the capacitors, you tend to want to place them as close to possible to the pin that they're connected to. So this is going to go to pin six. It also goes to pin four, but we don't, that's just a enable pin. So that's just, if we can just connect that up. The power route is what is critical for PCB layout when you're designing any type of power circuit. Next, I'm just going to move and place all of the components for the linear regulator circuit. So this is our feedback point. This is going to tie to the output. And then we need to just connect here to the uh, enable pin, or to the feedback pin, which is pin 2. And now the only thing left is the various components for the ESP32. So we have C6 and C7. Moves these over as close to there. 3.3. Ties here to the ESP32 and the same way with this one. And we have R1 goes to C8, that's the pull up. And then we just have these two switches that we can pretty much place anywhere. So let's go ahead and just draw the board outline now. So I'm going to go down here and select edge cuts and then draw a rectangle. So this will be our board outline. And what we're going to do is we're going to make it so the antenna hangs off the edge. We've got quite a bit of empty space, but I'm not really focusing on minimizing size for this design. I think that's all of the components we've got placed. Now it's just a matter of connecting things up. In the full length version of this video, I explain a lot more of the details and you can access the full length version using the link shown here and in the video description. And before we begin the routing, what we need to do is make sure that we've set this up as a four layer board. The default in KiCad is going to be just a two layer board. So for this design, we're going to be using four layers. So we'll have top and bottom copper, but there'll be two inner layers. One of those is going to be a ground plane, and then one of those is going to be for power routing. So what we're going to do is go under File, Board Setup, Physical Stack Up, Copper Layers, and then change this to four. 
So typically what I recommend doing is that the first thing that you route in this case is the differential pair for the D plus and the D minus from the USB port. That way you can route that. That's going to be the sort of the least flexible. And then let's just get that out of the way because what I've seen happen is if you do the differential pair last, then you, you may find yourself, you get boxed in and you sort of cornered yourself and then you have to start moving components out of the way to make room for the differential pair. So we're going to start with the differential pair. So the first step is we're going to route from the two data lines from the Bluetooth module. So I'm going to select to route differential pair and then I need to set the differential pair specifications. So the goal here is we need a differential pair with an impedance of 90 ohms and to get that you can set the the width of the traces and then the the spacing between the two traces. And in this video, you can see a link uh, below. I go through in detail how to calculate these values to get the 90 ohm impedance. Okay, so I'm just gonna route those from the module over to the ESD for the two data lines. And now I'm going to route from the USB connector to the ESD, also with the differential pair. Let's go ahead and connect up the different components for the ESB32. First thing we're gonna do is connect up our 3.3. Now let's go ahead and connect up our two switches here. So let's see, that goes to pin 45 and pin four. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move that switch. So R1 and switch one. And let's go ahead and route from 45. And you can see it goes here. Then we have C8. So that's C8, this just holds this pin low until R1 pulls it up, or you press the switch and then that pulls it back down to ground. Now we just need to make sure that we have power traces wide enough to carry the one amp of charge current, so I'm going to use a trace width calculator. And in the longer version of this video, I'll go into more detail on this, but for here, I'm just setting one amp of current, and it's saying for external layers, we need a minimum trace width of 11.8. So I'm going to use 12 mils as our trace width, now we're going to go down to our battery charger. Just going to go ahead and connect this. And then let's do the same for the output. Then we have R4. So I'm just going to route this here. Pin 7 is over here. It's going to go to ground. We'll deal with that when we do the ground layer. Same here. So now we just basically have our output that we've already connected. And now we just have the to the charge indicator and the power good indicator. So those are both going to go to the diodes. Okay, that's going to go to pin five, rotate this around. And then this here goes here. We move this a little closer, actually. And now we just have the other LED. And we have our JST connector. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these. Let's do maybe 12 mils. Now we just need to route the power to the linear regulator on the pin 6. Okay, let's go ahead and connect up. Once again, let's go ahead and make this. A, we'll grab this on the internal layer. Actually, you know, I'm going to just route it right here. This is nice and easy to grab hold of. Then we got pin four, which is just the enable pin. So I'm just going to tie that high. That just leaves connecting up, I think, our power on LED. R7, just a few milliamps usually. I think that resistor there. Okay, I think we have everything except the power connected. And let's go on the inner layer here. And I'm going to Right now, inner layer, and now I'm going to place a copper pour or a filled zone is what they're called. Some software calls it copper pours. And what it's going to do is this is an inner layer, so this is our ground. You first you click on the first corner, then you select uh, we're on inner layer. Then what do we want this to connect to? We want it to connect the ground. Give it a ground name for the zone. Then electrical clearance. We're doing six mils clearance in six mil minimum width. We don't need thermal relief, so I'm just going to do solid. I'm not even going to explain that here. And remove islands. Okay. Now we can go ahead and draw the other 
four points. Now what we need is we're going to add some ground vias to connect all these various grounds so they can via down and connect into that copper pour. So the first thing I'm going to do is select what this via connects to. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill all zones. It's going to fill that copper. So the green is the inner copper layer. Now I have to tie these vias or to the various components. Okay, so now I'm going to go on the inner layer two, and I'm going to draw another copper pour. This one is, I'm going to just do a small one here that's going to grab the 5 volt VN off the barrel plug. And then it will kind of take up this area here so it can get a really good power connection to the battery charger. Here. Now we need vias that connect this up to that power plane. Except these are no longer ground. This is 5 volt VN. I need to go on the top layer. Okay, this also needs same via here put one there and then we need the vias the five volt vias fill hold zones again so you can see this is our five volt copper pour now we're going to do one for the 3.3 so we're going to go to enter two and i'm going to do place a filled zone and let's do, so we wanted to grab here, here. So I'm gonna connect that. Clarence six, I'm gonna do 12. Need to add vias for that. This is gonna be U2 out, okay? I need that on the top layer. So let's go ahead and copy. And I want it to connect right here on the input capacitor. So it's going to tap off the output capacitor off the battery charger and connect that to the input capacitor on the linear regulator. Or only going to the linear regulator, so don't need to be super wide, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyways. So all zones. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on the back side and I'm going to put a copper pour or a filled zone as well on that for the ground. Okay, so the only thing we have left, I believe, is to add the ground connection for the module. So we're going to add a bunch of ground vias here and a filled zone. So I'm going to zoom in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy this ground via here and I'm going to start putting vias. And now what we're going to do is draw a filled zone. Okay, there we go. So we have a nice ground connection for our module, um, but also our power jack here. I'm going to do this uh, better. This was, uh, I just put, first of all, only one V on each pad. So that's not going to be enough. And then I've still got this at the, only the six mil trace width. So that's not going to be enough. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use a copper pour here instead of these uh, traces. And the last step, I'm just going to take these ground vias and I'm just going to fill in some of these empty spaces and there are plugins for KiCad that will do this but I'm just going to do it manually and I think that should be good and the final step is to run the design rules verification which is going to make sure that our PCB layout doesn't violate any of the design rules for instance we don't have two traces that are too close together and then it's also going to compare the PCB layout to the schematic so we're going to go under inspect design rules checker and run DRC and we have a clean finished design. In case you missed it, here's the first part of this tutorial where I designed the schematic circuit diagram for this same board. So be sure you check that out next.